Hey, what's going on everyone? In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating the newest CyanogenMod 10.1 features as well as some of the older ones, but I'll demonstrate the new ones first. Um, some of these features will not be included in all devices, but I'll explain why when I get to it. So the first thing to start with is the lock screen. Now, there's, a, there's something about this uh, you guys should know. Application uh, unlocking shortcuts have been available since, as far as I know, CyanogenMod 7, maybe even older than that. Uh, however, my Galaxy S2 when I was running CyanogenMod 9 and 10, it wasn't available, and now it, it's back. So I, I don't know if maybe it was device dependent, but it just wasn't there, and now it's working again. Even though this is a Nexus 4, it, it just is is there by default now. So for example, um, if I want to unlock to music, it'll open Apollo, and um, y those those shortcuts are customizable. One older feature is if you get a notification, like say a text message. You would have the option to text back, view the full message, or call back, but uh, that that's not too important. Now, okay, you might have noticed that I have this. Where if I can see it, there, this is Pi Control. Uh, you'll notice that I'm running a Nexus 4. My my regular um, operating system hard, like controlling buttons aren't there. I have this thing called uh, Pi Control, which I think is originally from Paranoid ROM, and the CyanogenMod team has just like redone it from scratch and created their own version. So this uh, this thing to make it run, it's there's a stipulation to it. You must be running a Nexus device because Nexus devices, the newer ones after the Galaxy Nexus mind you, uh, they don't have physical buttons at the bottom. So if your device does not have physical buttons at the bottom and you have CyanogenMod 10.1, most likely you can get Pi Control. Now, uh, let me show you what the problem here is. If you're running a device like this, this is the Galaxy S2, you cannot run Pi Control, dependent. Uh, so this particular device cannot, but the CyanogenMod team has said that some some cell phones uh, that have physical buttons, you can still get Pi Control up and running. But my Galaxy S2 doesn't have it implemented. However, they may implement it in the future, it's impossible to tell. So it's very device dependent, so don't get your hopes up if that's a feature you're really looking forward to. Um, you have the usual features of customizing the, oh I have Nova launcher, but you can customize this um, uh, the default launcher, which is trebuchet. The lock screen, as I was saying, you can customize it. Uh, lock security, you know, you can do the timeout. You can have a custom timeout for the lock screen and whatever security. You can change the background wallpaper, uh, battery status, clock widget. Is that new weather widget you guys probably saw? Uh, the slider shortcuts is what I was talking about. You can actually slide to anything. So say music. And here, if you tap this, you can change the application. You get options of widgets, small widgets. So like uh, SoundHound ID now, just as an example. Uh, where are my Pi controls? There they are. And you can change the icon itself, okay? So that's that. Uh, themes, you can download hundreds, if not thousands of themes from the internet, most likely XD developers. Uh, you can, you know, make your phone, I have a Nexus device, I can make my phone look like a Samsung device. It won't have the Samsung apps, it'll just look like it, if someone has made a Samsung theme. Uh, system, okay, so this is where a good chunk of the features are. Well, I've pretty much gone through the new features of Sanajamod 10.1, except for one thing. There is a new feature that is coming soon, it's not actually out yet, um, in which you can, I guess it's just easier to demonstrate for you guys. This menu here, when you long press, you, you get this menu pop up, right? Like I'm demonstrating here. There will be a new option where you can slide to in that if you if you say something like Sid or Whiskey, it would take a picture. So it's basically a voice uh, picture taking command. It's not implemented yet. Um, I, I, I'm not patient enough to wait and then demonstrate it for you guys, but a developer who's actually working on it has a video on YouTube. I'll put a link to that video in the description below. Hopefully it works because it's set to private, um, but it's it's a short clip, really easy demonstration. The con is that every time you want to take a picture with a voice command, you have to keep turning that option on. Uh, so those are the new features, basically, I've just covered. Now for the older features, for those of you who are new to CyanogenMod. Basically, you can customize the status bar. Uh, you can change the way the... You'll notice when my battery icon is really unique. Uh, too bad my camera's not focusing. There it is. I have a circle with the percentage, 77%. You can change that. Uh, you have a whole bunch of options here. You can completely hide it if you want. Um, what else? You'll notice that Pi Control, I have to keep swiping sometimes. I'm not a fan of it. Uh, actually, 
Turning it on is not that easy. I'll maybe make a video on how to turn Pi controls on in Sign Mod. Notification drawer basically allows you to have these special uh, icons here. You can turn Wi-Fi on and off, data, whatever. You get a huge list, where is it, widget buttons. And of course, to reorder them, you have the option here. I'm going through these quickly because I've demonstrated this before and it, they're pretty easy options to find. Um, what else? Expand desktop is basically, it, it expands the desktop literally. That's what causes the uh, buttons at the bottom to disappear. So that's nothing special. You can customize the power menu. This is where this is where you would implement screenshot taking. So you would have screenshot check marked or expanded desktop. You press and hold the power button. You'll notice that my power options is, is pretty big big than default, right? Uh, the default Android system. Uh, I have screenshot, desktop. This this is where all these options will be implemented. So it's pretty uh, it's, it's it's pretty useful for some people. You have notification lights, blah blah blah. You can customize them. Uh, you can co you can add almost any application you want in how sense not sensitive but how uh, quickly the LED light will flash. Pi controls is the options I showed you guys, which was the the slide from the bezel up. You can actually put on the left side and the right side. It, it, it's very customizable. Sanjumon has done a great job of it. Okay, quick launch shortcut is basically uh, allows you to. Okay, let me just show you like this. If you press and hold the home button on a Nexus device or a device with on-screen hardware control buttons, not hardware control, but you, you know what I mean, you get Google Now, right? But you can actually add one application here and another one here. I've added ID Now, which is the SoundHound widget, which as soon as it opens, it starts IDing whatever it's playing. So you can actually add whatever you want. It's not just restricted to uh, widgets. Let's see, where is it? Select application. Okay, so these are the miniature widgets I was telling you about, right? But then if you select applications, you'll get your full list of applications. I believe that's pretty much the... Oh yeah, again, if you have a Nexus device, you can customize these buttons here. So let me just show you. If you unlock it, you can actually add more buttons here at the bottom. Okay, I, I don't want to do that, but you do have that option. Of course, uh, there is auto-updating. Not auto-updating, but I'll show you about phone. Signage mod updates. You can search for updates right from your phone itself. You don't have to hook it up to your computer or anything like that. Uh, so you can see that there's been new Nightly's released since I've installed my current Nightly version. Okay, so another feature that's been around for a long time on Signage mod, uh, even older versions, is if you go to display, uh, you can change volume rocker to wake up the phone. So basically, you can have it so that tapping your volume buttons will turn the screen on. So if it's off, let me demonstrate. My power button's here, right? If I tap a volume button, the, the screen turns on. If you go to your phone system settings and then about phone, this should be very obvious to you. And you keep tapping build number, uh, you'll get developer options, but you also get special signage mod options where you get performance. Okay, so performance is basically uh, special signage mod features. See, you get a warning right off the bat as soon as you open it. it. It basically allows you to tweak the device in such a way that it's not, it's not available to most people. Here's what I mean. Uh, Safe processor, for example, you can adjust the clock speed, CPU frequency, stuff like that. Um, these features, let me just go through them really quickly. Uh, you can just pause. I don't know what some of these things mean because I'm not a developer. So you guys can just pause the video and read what the option says if you want. These features are extremely like sensitive. So if you if you don't know what you're doing, never uh, under any circumstance um, select this option performance. I mean, there's no harm in opening it, right? But just don't tweak anything if you if you don't know what you're doing. You could really damage your device big time. One thing I mentioned that, you know, some features are device dependent, like Pi Control. Well, let's go to a device with hardware buttons. Uh, okay, so you'll notice on my Galaxy S2, it's, it's not present on my Nexus 4, but here I have an option called Advanced. And you can change, you know, some of the things. Um, you can just see for yourself, outdoor more and stuff like that. Uh, even the sensors. Not very sensitive right now, is it? <laughs> there you go. Uh, so, you know, you can enable like uh, the LED buttons here, stuff like that. So it's a very, this advanced menu will only show up on uh, certain devices. Okay, so one more thing I wanted to demonstrate that's very device dependent. Uh, this, again, I'm on the Galaxy S2 this time, is hardware keys at the bottom. Okay, this option is available on my Galaxy S2 because it has hardware keys. Whereas my Nexus 4 doesn't. And you, you can actually enable custom uh, actions. As you can see there, oh, let me just turn it on so you can read it a lot easier. Um, so you can change what actions, say the home button, 
maybe I wanted to activate voice search or something like that. And of course, you also have the option to display the, the three dot menu button. Basically, Nexus devices don't have a menu button restricted to three buttons at the bottom, right? So whenever we have an additional menu, let me see if I can find it for you guys really quick. Okay, see how you have a three dot menu button at the top here? You can actually technically enable that even though you have a hardware uh, menu button, right? So you can actually still enable it. So that option is available to you. So that's basically the new and old features of San Anjamad. I apologize that I couldn't demonstrate the camera shutter uh, voice activation, but it's not available yet. And again, you can just find that video in the description below. It's just, it's honestly, it's just like a really tiny feature, but uh, whatever, you can check it out for yourself. Um, so many of the features are device dependent, but I try to demonstrate as much as possible and that's pretty much it. If you found this video useful, check out my website in the description below. Hit the like button, it does help. Subscribe and thanks for watching.